Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. Today I'm bringing you into the hospital with me and you're gonna see what a day is like. This is the first week I'm coming into the hospital and I don't have to put on a mask and I feel kind of naked. <laughs> and today I am lucky enough not to be on my own. I'm here with Emily, who is a med student that I'm working with for the week. Hi everyone. <laughs> oh, we're a little bit low here. Okay. Right now you're following four patients from yesterday. Mm -hmm. We've got three new patients that came in last night. Two of them are cardiac and you've already been seeing a lot of cardiac patients. Yes. And there's one that's quite the mystery that I want you to see. Okay. So this patient comes in with pancytopenia. Okay. So all of their blood counts are down. Red blood cell, white blood cell, platelets are all low. I'm not going to tell you anything more. So you can try to piece it together, figure out what's going on, and then we'll review it this afternoon. We can talk about potential causes. That sounds good. Okay, so I've got to say, it's very exciting to have a medical student that I'm working with. I haven't had a medical student with me since being a resident. So I really feel like I've come full circle, going from being a medical student and going through residency and now being an attending physician, looking after and teaching a medical student. Uh, so it'll be fun. We've got 15 patients to see today. Emily's gonna see five of them, but I will still see those patients as well. So I'll see all 15, and then we'll make sure we carve out time for teaching, which you guys know I love. <laughs> so, all right, let's head to the emergency. Whoa, let's head to the emergency department now. I walk into the room and see a woman sitting in bed on her phone. That's always a good sign. She tells me that she was recently diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and started on treatment. Less than a month later, she felt absolutely exhausted and soon after developed a cough and a fever. She was worried her oxygen levels might be low, so she came to the hospital. The emergency doctor diagnosed her with pneumonia and also found her blood counts were extremely low, to the point that she's already received a blood transfusion. But I'm not gonna tell you any more at this point. I don't wanna give it away until Emily does her assessment. I just got called by the nurses upstairs. One of my patients is having a seizure right now. They don't have a known seizure disorder, so this is something new. As I enter the room, I see multiple nurses standing around the bed as the patient is making rhythmic jerking movements with his body. In an emergency situation like this, I'm always thinking about airway, breathing, and circulation. But also, don't ever forget glucose. Luckily, the nurses have already checked his glucose and it's normal. So now we need to focus on stopping the seizure. I see the patient already has an IV, so I ask the nurses to administer four milligrams of IV lorazepam. I don't know if that will stop the seizure, so I prepare for the next steps. I ask the nurses to draw some stat blood work to look for possible causes of the seizure. And in the meantime, I watch his breathing closely. Luckily, his oxygen saturations are normal. But if that changes, we'll be prepared to intubate him. But the seizure continues, so we give him another dose of Ativan. Again, we need to be one step ahead, so I ask the nurse to draw up a dose of Keppra, a different anti-seizure medication. Fortunately, a few minutes later, the seizure stops. He's sedated from the medication, but I'm convinced there's no more seizure activity. So now the question is, why did he have a seizure? Okay, so the patient has just gone downstairs to get a stat emergency CT scan of the head. So we have a moment um, while we are waiting for those results to come back. Basically, this patient came into hospital with a new stroke. And then while he was here, we had him on telemetry watching his heart rhythm and he was newly diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Basically, it's when the heart um, has this irregular heart rhythm um, where it's, it's not organized, it's not pumping properly. And because of that, some parts of the heart have stagnant blood where a blood clot can form. And that's dangerous because that blood clot can then shoot up into the brain, causing a stroke. So that's what we think happened to this patient. And now I'm worried that today, because of the seizure, that there could be hemorrhagic transformation of the stroke, meaning that part of the brain that's weak because it had the stroke, did it start bleeding, which would be very dangerous. Okay, the CT scan is up. So, it looks fine. There's no new bleed, a bit of a change in the last couple of days, which you'd expect after a stroke, 
but nothing to explain the seizure, nothing new. Okay, that is reassuring. So I suspect all of this is because of the original stroke, because now there's a damaged part of the brain and that can be a cause for seizure. But I'm gonna send off some more blood work, talk to the neurologist and go from there, monitoring the patient really closely today. Okay, so today's sort of like a rheumatology day. We've just done an ankle aspiration. Now Ellen's gonna do her very first shoulder injection. You excited? Very excited. She's ready, she's got this. And then after that, we're going to do a, a knee aspiration. So rheumatology day. First step is going to be getting our supplies. Yes. Okay, so why don't you come over here, show me what you want to get. All right, sounds All right. good. I really love these moments of teaching on the fly. I remember how excited and nervous I was to do my very first injection. And now getting to see Emily's curiosity and enthusiasm really reminds me why I love teaching so much. Okay, next we'll get the steroid medication, the good stuff. And... Have you guys, have you seen the pneumatic system? Yes. You probably know it well. Okay, let's show you guys. <laughs> Aha, so this is the tube that comes up from pharmacy with the medications. It's like a time capsule or something. Excellent. Oh, putting it back here. And this is where it comes from. That's what I want as my retirement gift, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Emily is mixing a combination of lidocaine and corticosteroid, which will both be injected into the patient's shoulder. The freezing will make the patient's shoulder feel better very quickly, while the steroid will decrease inflammation and decrease pain in the long run. Honors are yours. Thank you. <laughs> Warning for anyone who's scared of needles, you may want to skip ahead in the video. Now, this isn't actually Emily doing the injection. Can you imagine the pressure of your supervisor filming you while you're attempting a procedure for the first time and then putting it on YouTube? <laughs> I would never do that to someone. But here you can see what we did, injecting a combination of corticosteroid and freezing into the shoulder to relieve a patient with rotator cuff tendinitis. Fantastic job. How did it feel? It felt good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. she did an amazing job. So now you've mastered that. You got to do a, a couple more yep. <laughs> before you feel comfortable on your own. But no, just exactly like that. Perfect. Okay, we're having lunch, and I just learned that Emily and I were both really into House MD. For me, like mostly like leading up to med school and yep. trying to get a sense of what it was gonna be like. Sure, so sure. now that you're here, you're on internal medicine. Is it similar? What do you think? It's similar and it's different at the same time. I mean, similarity wise, we did have that one case this week mm -hmm. uh, that was a little bit of a medical mystery. Uh, we ended up getting some additional information from the family, which I think really helped us out. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's similar, but we definitely don't break into people's houses, <laughs> yeah. go through their stuff to help us solve cases. So yeah. in that way, I definitely think it's different. It's different, yeah. right? Yeah. But we are sort of doing our lists and writing things out yes. and crossing things off, but it's not. so. I do see a similarity too, but what about Grey's Anatomy? I feel like sometimes it was a little more dramatic. <laughs> yes, there's always a disaster in Grey's yes. Anatomy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, they're always having surgeons sort of pulled out of the hospital and into the field, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. We don't do that. No, because then no. who's operating in the hospital? I don't know. <laughs> and like, we have EMS services who are so good. They're so yes. trained at doing these types of resuscitations in the field. Like, anyway, I don't, I've never seen it anyway. Neither have I. Back to reality, to real life. <laughs> so how are things going so far? So far, they're going well. I just have a couple follow-ups left to see and then I think I'll be ready to review. Wanna see like another hour, two hours, somewhere in that range? <laughs> so finally, tell me about the new patient. Tell me the story. All right, so this is what I learned. The patient came in with symptoms of pneumonia to the emergency department. When I did a physical exam today, I found some oral ulcerations. Mm. And on laboratory uh, findings, it showed that she was pancytopenic. Right. And it showed an elevation in her liver enzymes. Okay. I spoke a little bit with the pharmacist, and it turns out that she was actually taking her methotrexate daily instead of <sighs> weekly. Oh. Yeah. That is like, that is such a fear that I have for patients when I prescribe the methotrexate. Methotrexate is a medication that suppresses the immune system and we often use it in rheumatology to treat autoimmune diseases where the immune system is too active. It's also used as a chemotherapy drug to treat cancer, but at much, much higher doses than we use for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. And it's at those higher doses that we usually see side effects like low blood counts, hair loss, or mouth ulcers. Okay, so what do you wanna do? What's your treatment plan? 
So I think first we want to treat the pneumonia with some antibiotics Absolutely. to make sure that that's under control. Yep. The second thing we want to do is stop the methotrexate mm -hmm. so she's not getting that anymore. And the third thing we want to do is treat with leucovorin. Absolutely. Fantastic. That is excellent. Perfect. Now this case, you know why there was pancytopenia. So we've got a clear answer for that. Yeah. Um, but I want to use this as an opportunity that uh, we can kind of talk about your approach. Like I usually think in three different categories. What categories do you think of? So the first one I would think of is production. Mm -hmm. And then the second one would be destruction or sequestration. Yep. And then the last one would be consumption. Amazing. Yes. Good. So you may think that having a medical student to see patients and write notes and help out will make things faster, or at least that's what I thought. Turns out that is not true. <laughs> Between, you know, going and seeing the patients, doing physical exam teaching, and taking the time to teach them, it actually slows you down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I gotta say, I absolutely love the experience, especially with someone so strong as Emily. So I think it's worth it, but that is why I'm now here <laughs> late at night, finishing up my notes, because I just didn't have a chance to, to get to some of the work I had to do during the day. Okay, finally done. Mark is <laughs> waiting for me over here, <laughs> ready to get going. He actually managed to leave the hospital go for a run and it's now time to go grab dinner together. So it was awesome bringing you guys on another day in the life. It's been a while. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more like this and otherwise I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.